from a purely mechanical point of view, we can perform composition. That's what we were doing yesterday. But missing from this conversation has been any kind of motivating factors. What is composition and where does it show up? Well, composition occurs when, and this isn't going to immediately make sense, but when you have what I call chains of functions. And let's try to clarify this. Remember that functions have inputs and outputs. So you have a function, it takes an input and it sends it to an output. Well, you might then have a second function that takes this output as its input. And then maps it to a second output. And if this diagram isn't immediately clear, I think a concrete example might help. Let's say we are heating a metal bar. So as time passes, a metal bar is heating up. And we can define a function that takes time as its input and gives the temperature of the bar as its output. Now, as a metal bar heats up, it's going to experience a phenomenon known as thermal expansion. Thermal expansion occurs when a metal bar increases in length. It heats up, its length increases. So we can define a second function that takes the temperature of the bar as its input and gives the length of the bar as its output. So in terms of the diagram we had on this frame, we have a temperature that takes time and sends time the temperature. And this output of the first function is the input of the second function. The second function G sends temperature to length. And situations like this are where composition occurs. 
And what composition does is create a third function that goes directly from the first input to the second output. So the composition creates a function that sends time straight to length with no reference to temperature appearing. And the specific composition, it's a little, maybe a little unintuitive. We have a function f and a function g. And we're used to reading things from left to right. But the composition that is going to go from time to temperature is G of F of X. So the composition, notice, is in reverse order. That is, if you take, look at this sort of bow chart and read left to right, first you see the function S, then you see the function G. But when you write down the composition, you see we've written that G first and this F second. And as with so many things in mathematics, I think a concrete example will help verify all of this. Let's keep the time temperature length example. Let's define a function that takes as its input the amount of time the metal bar has been heating and gives as its output the temperature of the metal bar. And this function will not be realistic if, if any of you have like seen Newton's law of heating or anything. But let's keep things simple. Let's say that the temperature after X minutes is 70 degrees Fahrenheit plus the square root of X. So we have a concrete equation here. And then we'll define a function that sends the temperature of the bar to the length of the bar. Say G of X equals five plus zero point zero one. So we have a function that takes time to temperature, and we have a function that takes temperature to length. And let's give ourselves a concrete goal, which will be to write a function. that takes not temperature, a function that takes time as its input and out 
Pods. The length of the bar. So our goal is going to be to perform a composition. But which composition do we want to perform? That might not be immediately obvious. There are two compositions we could perform. We could stick G into F, or we could stick F into G. And it might not be obvious which of those we want to do. It might not be obvious which of those is going to allow us to accomplish this goal. And to clarify things, let's write out the chain as it were. We have a function that goes from time to temperature, and we have another function that goes from temperature to length. And the function that goes from time to temperature is F. And the function that goes from temperature to length is G. And our goal is to create a new function that cuts out the middle man, as it were, that cuts out the temperature and goes directly from time to length. And here's where you have to remember that composition is written in this reverse order. So reading from left to right here, we have F, then G, but the composition that we want is G, then F. And this is probably the sort of the hard part of the problem. Once we've figured out what composition we want to perform, um, this is what we were doing in class yesterday. Let me copy everything we need onto this. We copy down G of X, five plus point zero one X. And let me remind myself, remind us what f of x is, 70 plus the square root of x. So now that we know what composition we need to perform, and we've reminded ourselves what these functions are, where in the situation we were in yesterday, where we're just sticking functions into one another. So we stick f of x inside of g, then we replace f of x with whatever it is. 70 plus the square root of x. And 
we were asked to find the function. We found the function. Our answer is complete. We haven't been asked to set it equal to zero or set it equal to anything or do anything with it. We've been asked to find this function and we have. We could simplify it a little if we wanted to, but fundamentally we've finished this problem. We should probably do a second example. I'll just pick one from the classwork. But does anybody have any questions so far about what this composition is or how we're performing it? If not, Say that's so that a problem from the class work. So now we're looking at a bar, no longer a metal bar, but the kind of bar where you go to drink. Or, well, you don't, but you know what I mean. Um, so, a bar can estimate its nightly revenue from the number of customers it has. In particular, according to some website that may or may not be trustworthy, on average in America, when somebody goes into a bar, they spend $36.51 there. So the revenue that the bar generates is the number of customers it has times 36.51. Now, when it is very cold, or very hot. People tend not to go to bars. They tend to stay in. So the number of customers that a bar can expect depends on the weather outside. It depends on the temperature. And a semi-realistic equation, at least, I mean, this is for a larger city than Shadron. I doubt many bars here are seeing 700 people in a night, but in a large city, a realistic equation might be a maximum of 700 people and then minus 7. some quadratic term. We haven't talked about quadratics that but we don't need to know anything about them to do with this problem. So, we've given you, or I've given you, two functions. One function 
takes the number of customers. And what am I doing? And gives the revenue. And I've named that function R for revenue. And the other function takes um, the temperature. and tries to estimate the number of customers. And I've called that function C for customers. So we have this shape. We can go from the temperature to the number of customers to the revenue. And what we could do, we haven't really stated a goal yet, but what we could do is define a new function that attempts to estimate the bar's revenue just from the temperature outside without any reference to customers at all. And if this is the function C, and this is the function R, then this new function is the composition of those two functions. And it's the composition written in reverse order. So once again, you see C, then R, but when we write down the composition, it's R, then C. I mean, this is all, wow. I'm just trying to think what's my variable here. My variable isn't X. This fun function is taking temperature as its input. And I'm using T for temperature. So if our goal is to find this function, we've done what I would sort of think of as the hard part, or at least we've done the stuff that's new for today's lecture. All that remains now is to actually perform this composition as we performed compositions yesterday. So let me give myself a little room to work by going a little over to the left. And let me remind myself, or I guess I have them written down, what these functions are. R of C equals 36.51 C. C of T equals 700 minus 0 0.0013. Times T minus 65 squared. That's sort of blending in. So let's put a border around it. And now, as far as performing the composition, we've got 36.51. Uh, 
times C of T. So 36.51 times 700 minus 0 0.00132. 0 0 T minus 65 squared. And there is a function that takes temperature as its input and gives revenue as the output and does not make any explicit reference at all to the number of customers. Let me say, by the way, that in terms of the composition class work, it was mostly fine, but by far and away, the biggest mistake, the biggest errors I saw were in the simplification like people foiling incorrectly and stuff like that. So you could simplify this a little if you wanted to, I guess, but not at the cost of introducing errors into what was originally correct work. I'd rather just leave it like this than see it sort of simplified incorrectly. And that's the content portion of the day. That is, that's the new material part of the lecture. Does anybody have questions before I hand stuff out to you? And I'll also get you some stuff back, some old in class work. Well, if you develop questions, you know you can always raise your hand and I will come answer them. Six, I think. 